So if you're still having trouble getting your RS-485 adapter to control your spindle, then stick around. I might have something that'll help. The video is sponsored by Masso, makers of the Masso CNC controller. Eight hardware and software package to run your machine with no PC required. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at a little piece of software called Spindle Talker. You now quite often I get asked to give a helping hand try and diagnose an issue with a VFD. In particular, the type of VFD that I have on my machine. And it's not easy to do. There are just so many things that have to be set up correctly that it's hard to know where the problem is. You've got to get your RS-485 adapter plug-in correctly installed. You have to configure your VFD properly. And then you have to go through and configure the Mac 3 or UCCNC to make sure that's all correct. And if you get it right, it'll work. Hopefully. There's just so much that could go wrong. And, of course, being remote, there's no way of actually looking at it. And, of course, my only experience with it is installing my own one. I got it up and going, and that's the extent of my knowledge. I don't do this as a day job. It's just something I learned as I went along installing the spindle. But I do know a little bit about fault finding. When it comes to fault finding, if you can split the job up into different parts, it becomes a hell of a lot easier to find out what's good and what isn't. So that's where Spindle Talker comes in. It will allow us to eliminate UCCNC or Mac 3, and it will talk directly to the VFD. And once we've got the VFD running under Spindle Talker, then we can concentrate on Mac 3 and UCCNC and get that working. If we can break the job up into little parts, it's going to make life so much easier. You know where your issues are. So let's take a look at Spindle Talker. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download Spindle Talker. I'll put a link on my website to where you can find this page. And if we go here, we find a file here called spindletalker2.zip. I'll just click on that and I'll save that file to my USB stick. While we're on this page, let's have a quick look at it. We can see what to expect from Spindle Talker. We can see a screenshot here showing us some dials and various information. There's a bit of a write up about the history of Spindle Talker some VFD settings that the author of this page used on his machine and then we have here a diagnostic page and a settings page and also you can run it from here as well. So now we've got the file, let's go and install it on the machine. Now it literally couldn't be simpler to install Spindle Talker onto your machine. Simply Double click on the folder and you'll find three files. Just click and drag them onto your desktop. And that's it. Spindle Talker installed. Now if you think that was too easy, you're probably right. But that's only because I'm running Windows XP. When I double click on it here, it's saying that to run this application, I first need version 4 of .NET Framework. So I'm going to need to install that on my laptop. Of course, if you're running Windows 7, 8, or Windows 10, you don't need that. So now let's try out Spindle Talker. I already have my RS-485 adapter installed. First thing I want to do is try and make a connection. For that, I'm going to come up here to Settings. I'm using COM3 because that is the COM port that my RS-485 adapter is on. I'm leaving my settings at 9K6, 8-bit, no parity, one stop bit. I'm using Modbus 1. 
that's the settings that I have installed into my VFD and the same ones that I showed earlier on. I'm going to come down here to the the screen here which shows me the communication that's going on here. Over here I'm going to get sent commands and over here I'm going to get any responses I see coming back from the VFD. And I'm going to come down here COM port and just click here which should give me a connection. The data has been sent and it's obviously received information back from the VFD. Because if it doesn't see that, it won't be very happy. I can now click here the start button and it should start running the spindle up. And there it goes there. Over here you can see that it sent a command to start spinning and over here came a response back from the VFD. I can click what speed I want it to run at here, say 9000 RPM. And you can see again an instruction has been sent to the VFD and a response came back. Likewise here I have a spindle speed slider. I can simply drag it to whatever speed I want. You can see here various information. And when I'm finished, I can just click the stop button. And the spindle stops. On the screen here, it shows me other information. I'll click start. It shows here the output frequency of the VFD, the set frequency of the VFD, what speed that equates to and how much current is being drawn by the VFD. I can come over here and click what speed I want it to move to. You can see there my frequency has increased to 250, 15,000 RPM and a current draw of about 0.8 of an amp. Remember this spindle is not under load. And of course I can turn it off. So as you can see my VFD is working fine. Now I'm just going to disconnect the COM port here and I'm just going to go back into the setup screen. You can see here the information is that there is basically zero hertz and basically no RPM. But if I actually connect, do a connection here on the COM port, it actually reads the information from the VFD drive which says I got a minimum frequency of 100 hertz, that's 6000 RPM a maximum of 400 hertz and that equates to a maximum frequency of 24,000 RPM. So it gets that information from the VFD drive and of course from this screen I can turn the spindle on, I can increase its speed, I've got the slider here and again I can turn it off. And it really is as simple as that. Simply drag and drop those files onto somewhere convenient like the desktop. And assuming you have the correct version of .NET Framework installed on your machine that's uh, version 4 or higher, it should just run. You shouldn't have any problems at all. And of course this is checking for us that we've got the right version or that our driver is correct for our RS-485 adapter, that it's wired correctly to the VFD and that the VFD has the correct configuration in it. And of course all this is independent of our control software so we can eliminate that as any source of problem. And so long as it runs properly in our version of Spindle Talker, that is you can turn on and off as you require and you can up and down the speed correctly without any problems, then you know that that's all right and you can continue on to the next step. If of course you're running Windows 7 or higher, you shouldn't have any problem with the .NET framework issue like I had on mine. And of course, if you keep your PC up to date, then you won't either. But generally, I don't update my laptop in my workshop because it causes more problems than it fixes. Now, in my personal life, of course, I don't actually use the RS-485. And why is that? It's because I absolutely dislike USB devices trying to run my machine. The only exception I make to that is this here, my USB pendant, because I don't really have any other choice. 
just my personal opinion, I don't like USB devices around electrically noisy componentry. That's why I went for Ethernet controller and I'm just using pulse with modulation to drive my spindle and that's good enough for me. So I actually don't use it, it's a choice I've made, but I know many people like using USB and all the best for that as well. And that's where I'm going to leave it this week. I hope you've enjoyed it, maybe learned something new, and now have a new diagnostic tool that you can use for sorting out your spindle. What's more, I hope you never need it. All that remains me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my website, uh, www.cncnuts.com. I'll put links to where you can download Spindle Talker, and you can read up the information on that website as well. In the meantime, I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.